everybody, it's Benita Moyers, the Happy Tech Teacher, and I'm really excited about today's tutorial because it is quickly becoming one of my new most favorite Google tools, and that is Google Drawings. Now, I'm going to admit that when I first started studying for the Google Certified Educator Exam Level 1, I didn't know anything about Google Drawings. I didn't even know they existed. And at that time, it was really kind of embedded within one of the options in Google Slides um, or buried down in the Apps feature, and I really just didn't know it was there. And so I studied just a little bit about it, just enough to pass the exam, and then I never really opened it again or even fooled with it. But here recently, since the COVID-19 closures and everybody's been scrambling to try to figure out how to teach virtually um, and all this Bitmoji craze that I've been seeing on Facebook, I really got into um, having fun trying to create my own virtual classroom. And one of the things that really drove me crazy the most was the fact that some of the graphics I found or some of the graphics I owned already had a background to them that would often interfere with the layering of the different um, objects within my virtual classroom or if I was um, working on this new digital planner that I decided to create for myself I noticed things were overlapping and I was taking these um, PNG files and I was going to external sites um, to remove the background even if it was something that I was creating myself I still had the background there and I was creating a lot of things, but I was creating them in Google Slides because Slides is so versatile and I could put word art in it and things like that. But once again, there was always sort of a background to it. And so I started playing around and I was watching a fellow trainer who started talking about Google Drawings one day. And I had never even noticed when I opened it up um, this checkerboard pattern on the back of the, the Google Drawing. Well, come to find out, this is um, one of the most exciting features about Google Drawings. What this is, is when you open this up, it already has a transparent background. So this is a great place to create images and drawings that you want to turn into PNG files um, so that you can insert those into various kinds of documents and websites and things like that. So if you look, you'll see it very faintly, the white and the gray checkerboard. So that always means that it's transparent. Now, if we look up here, I'm going to switch over here to Google Slides for just a minute. You're going to see in Google Slides that we have a lot of the same things up here on top, the file and the insert, and you're going to see the text box, the image, and the shapes. You're going to see that here in the drawings as well. You're just not going to see all the transitions and the themes as um, as you would in the Google Slides thing. But you can also look up here and there's lots of different formatting options. There's some things in here that are not in Google Slides. You will still see the arrangement um, choices. Uh, and then if you look at the insert, this is going to look identical to Google Slides. You're going to see that you can put in shapes and tables and charts, diagrams and all those things just like you would in Google Slides. But whatever you create in here is going to have that transparent background. There is also another cool feature that I want to show you. So for example, one of the things if you notice whenever you have inserted a lot of images, there may be a lot of excess space around whatever it is that you're trying to insert and that can overlap and cause some issues. So sometimes people will double click on um, a box whenever they are in, um, let's put it one in here. So like for example, if we are in slides and I was trying to put um, an image in, let me put, let's see, let me find a frog image that I have not already um, removed the background from so I can give you an example here. So I have a lot of images as you can probably see. And a lot of them I've already removed the background and things, but let's just, I want you to see, um, see what I'm talking about. So for example, in this image right here, okay, uh, even if I put this in here, I have a lot of this extra space right here. I can always double click it and I can kind of drag in and kind of crop and do those sorts of things to make it more narrow. But 
when I'm creating an image, if I want to keep from having to do that every time I insert it, what I can do in Google Drawings is I can go in and narrow this down the first time. And then I can move this up into a corner. And then there is a special feature at the very bottom. If you click on the bottom right hand corner, these little lines right here that almost looks like um, several pages underneath each other will pop up and you'll see this little arrow, the two arrows with a line in the middle. And that means I can drag this. So I can drag this in really close and I can crop this into a image the size that I want it to be. Now, whenever I save this image, I'm going to crop it even more. Now, when I save this image, I won't have all the excess around it. So I'm going to, let's put another image in here too, because I want to show you how you can layer in here. So I have a frog classroom, so I'm going to put a frog in here just to be fun. <coughs> oh, let's do, actually, let's do this with one on the web. I want to show you one on the web. So let's go back in and let's search the web, because I want to mention to you also that whenever you are searching within one of the Google documents, it is much easier to find um, images that are already um, able to be used. If you click on them, it, they will say that you're able to use them commercially or, you know, with modifications. So you you can kind of work on your digital citizenship with you or your students that way. If you go out to a Google search, not everything is freely free for you to use. They have copyright issues. But if you search within Google Drawings, Google Slides, Google Docs, then the majority of the, the options that come here will be ones that you are free to use. And if you just click on these little hourglass right here where it says preview image, you can always double check to make sure that this is one that is free to use. Now, sometimes if you see this one says unable to create some in images, sometimes there will still be some that you are not authorized to use on here. It could be that um, either it is one that is not um, allowed. It could be one that if, for example, I'm using um, my district, um, my school email account sometimes, it will block it then as well. So if you have trouble with that, there's usually a reason you can't use that image. So I'm going to insert a couple of images because I want to show you how you can layer images that you already have into one big image that you create so that you're not having to layer every time. So for example, maybe you want to make your Google Classroom banner and you want it to be one, one PNG file to upload, but you need to layer it. Now you could, like I said, do this in Google Slides, but then you might have to fool with removing the background, cropping, those kinds of things. But Google Drawings is really fun for doing this. Once you've got everything in the way you want it, you can also go in here and there is some format options. There's borders and lines. So wherever I have this board, this blue um, editing line around here, I can go in and change the color. So let's change this to something bright just so you can see it. I'm going to make it a bright red. So I'm going to click off for just a second. So now you see that it's given me a border. And then he's kind of hanging off that border, so I'm going to drag him in here. I can also um, go into those borders and I can give it more weight so I can make it thicker. I can go in and I can make it thick, I can make it double, I can make it triple. So I can give it all these different little effects in here. And one of the ones that I really like, um, you can do the dash, but there's also some decorations on here. So you can give it a beveled look, a miter look. So there's all these different choices. So I think I'm going to do the round cap on here. So you see how this rounds the edges. So this just kind of gives it more of a professional feel, makes it kind of pop up off the page um, and that sort of thing. 
there are all the arranging tools that are also in Google Slides. So if you've watched the videos on Google Slides, you'll know how to align and distribute and to rotate. Uh, for example, if I click on this frog, I could go in and rotate him a little bit sideways and that sort of thing. So all those features are the same, just like you would see in um, Google Slides. You also, when you have the image on here, still have the format options where um, you can add drop shadows. I really like to add these to certain things. It kind of makes a little shadow underneath or on the side, depending on where you make the angle. So I'm going to exaggerate this shadow just to show you. So if you see a shadow popped up here, I can adjust the angle to make it go over here to the top side. Um, I can move it around to wherever the shadow, wherever I want it to be, which might not you know, seem very important to some people, but if you have an image and you have a sun, um, you know, maybe um, your virtual classroom has a window, you want the shadow to be on the opposite side of the window to, to reflect that the sun would be maybe coming in from this way. So there just may be several reasons why you may want um, to adjust the angle of that. There's also a blur radius, just like in Google Slides, where you can make it where it's more fuzzy or you can make the shadows super sharp. Um, that's kind of all just a visual preference um, that you can have. You can also recolor. So let's say that I don't really like the color of this frog. If I want it to be a blue frog or something, I can go in there and change the color on that as well. Just um, so all the for same formatting options are in here as you would see in Google Slides. So once I have sort of this um, image the way that I want it, you're going to go up to File and you can go to download and I save it as a PNG. Now you might want, if it has a picture in there of a person, um, you might want to use JPEG. That's a little bit higher quality for um, images such as, you know, your, if you were putting your picture in there and you're making a, a something for your classroom or something like that, you would want to use the JPEG. But if it's just graphics and things, you want to use um, I prefer to use PNG and you can also save this as a PDF. Now once you save it, it's going to open up a save box um, down here at the bottom and you're going to click on that and it's going to give you a preview inside of the pictures app or the photos app that comes with your computer. Now you can do some further editing in here if you want because it has its own edit and create features. You can share and you can print. I'm going to go to the three dots right here and I'm going to save it and give it a name. So I'm going to name it, um, let me put it somewhere where I can find it quick though. I want to make sure that, so I'm going to put drawings example. Now, if I go into Docs or Slides or a program or something that I want to put this in, I would go up here to Insert Image. I'm going to click on my drive. And then it's going to be in there and it's in my Recent. And what you're going to see is it's all cropped the way I want it to be. Of course, I kind of cropped off the edge of this. I was doing this very quickly. But what I want to show you is if I change the background of the slide itself, let's change it just so you can see what I'm talking about. You're going to see that this image is transparent. So the only thing that has any color or anything are the words and the image. So I have a transparent background already every time I use this one. So I don't have to worry about taking it and going to something some other website like um, Remove BG or, or Luna Pick or any of those other things, um, I can actually have that image um, without the background already. And now that I put it into Google Slides, I can animate it and do those other things that are so awesome about Google Slides. But Google Drawings is really fun. Um, there are several people that use Google Drawings to create their 
um, banner for Google Classroom and there are some dimensions out there that you can get for Google Classroom and for um, Google Forms and some of those things if you want to make headers for those. Um, I will say that as far as Google Forms goes, that it is hard to find an exact size for those because it um, varies based on what device they are viewing it from. But you can find some sizes for um, for the Google Classroom and for the Google Site banners out there if you do a Google search for those. And um, you can create those in there in here um, for that. You'll see the same features in here um, also about being able to see your viewing history, your comments. You can make a comment in here so you could have a team. Maybe they're create you're studying um, elections and they have to create an election banner or a sign. And so that team of students could work together and they can comment back and forth using the comment feature or you can comment with them and you can share this file with other people as well. And all the other things in here um, work very similar to all the other programs that, that you have with Google. That's what I love about Google is they try to make everything very similar so that you um, are familiar with it and you don't have to, to try so hard um, when you try a new product, it's going to feel a lot like some of the other things like docs and slides that you may be used to. So I hope this inspires you to get creative, to make some of your own graphics, maybe make some of your own banners and things like that, um, and to have a lot of fun with it. And just don't be afraid to play around with it, to layer it, to play around with the format options um, and things like that, the cropping features, and just get out there and get creative for your students. And then when you're comfortable with it, show your students how to do this and get them inspired because you can insert tables in here and use these call out shapes um, and you could have them create comic books um, with, you know, with all the information they're learning, maybe from a book study or for a history uh, lesson, and they can present the information to you in some kind of a visual document like this instead of just a written paper. So it would get them highly engaged, especially if you are having to teach virtually and you want to keep them engaged and excited and, and, and want to make sure that, um, they're adding some creativity and some thoughts on their own. Um, this will be a fun way to do that by adding different kinds of features and images and text boxes and things like that. There's just so much that you can do with these. So go play with it, have fun, and hope you have a very happy day. 